Hello, my friends. My name is Gene Arnold, and thanks so much for tuning in to another episode of Regular Guy Mountain Biking. After I put up my review of the Polygon Siskiyou D6, I started getting questions from people on whether or not they should buy the D6 or the D7. They weren't sure if the difference between the two bikes was worth the extra money with going to the D7. Now, I kind of lucked out. Bikes Online sent me sent me this D6 that's behind me. I did a review on it, like I just mentioned. There should be a link for it over my head someplace. So if you wanna check out my review of the D6, please, by all means, go right ahead. But I also got lucky because a good friend of mine, Steve, bought the D7. And when he was on vacation, he lent me that bike so I could test it out and truly do a good comparison between the D6 and the D7. So finally, folks, I'll finally be able to give you the answer to the questions you've been asking me. I'll be able to give you a good idea of whether or not you should get the D6 or the D7. Both bikes have a very good place, and in this video, I'll help explain to you which bike would probably be better suited for you. Now, the first thing that you really need to know about these two bikes is that all the D-lines, including the D5, they're all built on top of the same great frame, okay? So when I say that you really can't go wrong, and if you buy the D6 or the D7, you're getting a great bike, you really are. The bikes are built on the same frame, and I'll take a look at the comparisons over here. I got it on my phone so I don't forget anything. But really, if you take a look at the comparisons between the D6 and the D7, there's not a lot of differences between the two builds. There's some very key differences that I'm going to talk about, but bottom line, D6, D7, you're going to win. Both bikes are awesome. Okay, so let's jump into things right away. What are these big differences between the D6 and the D7? The big differences really come down to suspension and drivetrain. Now, Here's how I'm going to position these bikes. The D6, great trail bike, okay? Cross country based. Um, remember, it is a down country type of bike. So it's a little bit more extreme than cross country, but uh, still more, more cross country like, not hardcore. In my opinion, if you're just looking to do more cross country trail riding, and maybe not ridiculously hilly riding, great bike to get started. Great bike to get started. But understand that the D6, the fork that comes on the D6, it's just not great. Bottom line, I'm a huge lover of Suntour products, SR Suntour products. I'm using their suspension and cranks, cranks on a lot of my bikes, but this particular one, it's pretty low end. So the fork on the D6 is not that great. Now for some folks, entry level, first full suspension mountain bike, the fork might actually be perfectly fine. You'll be happy and you're just gonna get out and put a smile on your face and enjoy riding. But for anybody that kind of wants to get going a little bit further, I'm telling you right now, you're going to replace the fork. I did here on my D6, I put an SR Suntour Axon fork on this bike. Phenomenal upgrade, love the fork, but I had to upgrade the fork on the D6. The D7 comes with the, I just don't wanna screw anything up over here, the RockShock Recon RL air spring fork. It's non-boost, but it is a much better fork than the one that comes on the D6. Would you wanna upgrade it in time? Yeah, maybe it's kind of heavy, but it's certainly better than the D6. So if you're a more advanced rider, you plan to do some more, I don't want to say hardcore because now we're getting into the T line, but just more aggressive, more down country type riding, right? More rocks, more roots. You will, you will find that the D6 entry level fork will be maxed out quite a bit faster than the RockShock Recon that comes on the D7. So what I'm saying is the D7, the fork on the D7 probably wouldn't need to be upgraded all that soon. In fact, um, the T that I have right now comes with a RockShock Recon, uh, a boost model, and it's actually pretty decent. So right, right there, if you're not looking to upgrade, you just want a more supple, more adjustable fork, 
the D7, the Recon, it's just a better fork. Next off, and this is the big one that kind of caught me that I actually wasn't expected to feel was so necessary is the drivetrain. This one, I gotta be honest with you, was kind of the deal breaker between the D6 and the D7 for me. Again, I was very lucky and Polygon, uh, rather Bikes Online sent me this bike, so no complaints. But if I did have to buy either a D6 or a D7, it's the drivetrain that killed it for me and would make me go to the D7. Because the D6, that comes with an 1146 tooth span, 10 speed drivetrain. I don't care about the 10 speeds. In fact, this bike has now been upgraded. The D6 has been upgraded to a box prime nine. Okay. Um, an amazing drivetrain. I love box products. But for where I live and for the hills that I'm riding up and down, I needed the bigger, the bigger, um, the, 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 the more aggressive low end gear. I needed that extra big guy cassette in the back. And the D7 comes with an 1151, 51 tooth low gear. Okay. It's 11 speed. Again, I don't even care about the speeds. It's the ratio. It's the, the big pizza pizza box down there, you know, the, the pizza pie back there. It's a big gear. When I rode my buddy Steve's D7 on the same trails that I rode my D6, look, it was just a more pleasant ride. I've actually become a bit stronger now that I've been riding my D6 with the only 46 tooth. But what I've also found is that, yeah, the first hour I'm kind of killing it. It's 45 minutes. I'm doing awesome. But it's that next hour where I need those bailout gears to kind of get me by. So I'm good with the 46 for a good chunk of the ride, but now I'm starting to bonk. Now I could always get stronger, right? Fine. But look, I'm telling you right now, the bigger gears on the D7 are the deal breaker for me. Other than that, there's not a whole lot really different. Um, the D7 does have a better shock all right, it does have a RockShock Deluxe Select Plus Debon Air um, shock, but uh, I didn't think the X-Fusion was really all that bad on the D6. But it's that fork, and man, it's the drivetrain that seals the deal for me to get the D7. The price point is not that, that bad, considering you're probably gonna upgrade the fork anyway, and with the D7, you'd be done. That's just my opinion. I'll go back to what I said earlier. You're not going to go wrong with either bike. But if you're a little bit more advanced, a little bit more of an aggressive rider, just spend the extra couple dollars, get the D7, because it's the way to go. And it's just, again, my recommendations. Big thanks to Bikes Online for sending me my D6. Big thanks to my buddy Steve for lending me his D7 so I could do a test on it. And always big thanks to all of you for watching these videos. Again, Gene from Regular Guy Mountain Biking. Keep the party on the pedals, my friends, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.